Hello again everybody, welcome to another edition of On the Range in the HNC Warthog. And today I'm up in the aircraft to look at a very specific aspect of GBU-12 delivery. And to answer the question, why did the GBU-12 and the GBU-10 consistently fall short of the target when released from below about 5,000 feet above ground level, or above the target location? And I noticed this during a mission that I flew recently and spent a little bit of time digging into it. And it turns out that that's exactly the way it's supposed to work. There's nothing wrong with the system. There's nothing wrong with the bomb aerodynamics. That's just the way that it's going to work. And I'll try to come up with some ideas and pass them along on what you can do to mitigate that. But first, I have the pod selected and am on a Zeus 23 AAA side. So just to demonstrate what a normal laser guided bomb delivery looks like, I have my GBU 12 selected. I'm going to pick one of these off. And just to show you the profile that I'm using for these GBU-12s, I have it set to CCRP by default, and I have it set to auto lease on and a lease time of 10 seconds. So when we release, the aircraft is going to automatically release the target about 10 seconds or right at 10 seconds prior to impact. Okay, so we're in CCRP mode. We have the time to release numeric at the top of the HUD counting down through 10 seconds. I verify master armed arm. So we'll just let it count down to about five seconds to press and hold the weapons release switch. And I'm just going to drop this bomb and then we'll just have a look at this intact view and watch what the bomb does. So the weapon is away and it's just following a ballistic arc. You can see the G-loading is just right there at about zero G. It's just falling over on its own. Now with 10 seconds to impact, the laser is going to fire and you're going to see the bomb start to oscillate as those fins start to deflect back and forth. And it starts to guide and just tries to keep that target where the laser spot is right in the middle of its field of view. So it settles in, it's got a good impact. And the key to take away here, and I'll back up to like the key point here, 10 seconds to impact, it picks up that laser spot and it maneuvers to put the target in the middle. Then it corrects forward up all the way up to 1.5G. And that's going to be important later on. Also check out the trajectory as it impacts. The guidance fins are firing to full deflection. So every correction that it makes takes a little bit of energy away and adds a little bit of drag. So you can see that the trajectory, in fact, starts to sag a little bit and it has to then correct forward to keep the target where the laser spot is right in the middle of its field of view. So let's see that again with a delivery from, let's say, about 2,000 feet above ground level. That's the altitude that I was trying to get this to work from in that mission that I just flew, so I'm going to dive pretty aggressively here. I'll go ahead and kick the speed brakes out, in fact, pull the throttle in a little bit, and I'll come around and pick up another target here. Go ahead and slew the pot on over to another known location, and I'll just use this guy as my next target. Okay, verify my charting pod is still my sensor point of interest, and this is the one that we're going to go after next. So I'm coming down through about 2,500 feet. I'll pull the speed brakes in, and I'll get lined up on this delivery, and the same sequence is going to happen. It's just going to be a normal delivery. The bomb is going to release. I have about yeah, 10 seconds to release right now. So I'll settle in on the target, five seconds, let me depress and hold the weapons release switch. Okay, still have a good lineup on that target. Two seconds to release. So the bomb comes off the aircraft, it picks up the laser spot immediately, it tries to correct, and it has to pull up. Now it's trying, 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 it can only get up to about 1.1G, still trying to pull up to the very end to keep that vehicle in the middle of its field of view. So just looking at the trajectory this time, it arcs over, like in that first delivery, but you can see it just get lower and lower and lower as more and more energy bleeds off and just doesn't have the maneuverability to bring itself back up. So the question now is why was that first bomb able to pull 1.5 G's to correct while this bomb was only able to pull 1.1 G? And well, I guess there are a few reasons, but the reason that matters here is just gravity. If we look at the first bomb, it's coming down at about a 50 degree dive angle while the second bomb was coming down at about 20 degrees, very shallow. So what happens here is that the bomb coming down at the steeper angle has less gravity to fight against. And just to, I guess, maybe help make this make sense, if you put your arm straight out to your side, your arm is fighting against the full 1G of the Earth's gravitational pull. Then if you lower your arm, you're fighting less and less against those G-forces, and the closer your arm is to pointing straight down, the easier it is to bring it back up. So that's the same thing that these bombs were faced with. The bomb at the steeper angle was fighting less to pull that 1.5G, while the bomb at the shallower angle was fighting more and could only get up to 1.2. There are other reasons, but that's the one that matters here. 
So the question then becomes, what can we do about this and what can we do to get that GBU-12 on as steep a dive as possible? And the answer in the A-10 is just increase altitude. The angle that we need to get to is somewhere in the vicinity of 30 to 35 degrees. So anything shallower than that, the GBU won't be able to make all the corrections that it needs. Anything steeper than that, it'll be just fine. So the higher the altitude the bomb is released from, the more time it has to arc over. And about four to 5,000 feet is going to get us into that steeper trajectory and then allow the bomb to make all the corrections that it needs. That's just sort of the magic number, about 30 to 35 degrees. And that's going to equate to about four to 5,000 feet of altitude. So I'll set up on that delivery right now, and then I'll get into just some ideas to mitigate this a little bit and possibly make an effective low-level GBU-12 delivery. So we're coming up on five seconds. I'm going to depress and hold the weapons release switch. And the weapon is going to release. Now I'm going to tweak up my guidance slightly. I have 15 seconds to impact, and at 10 seconds the laser is going to start firing. That'll be close enough. Laser's firing. The bomb is starting to oscillate. Is it tries to correct itself over aerodynamically to guide on that laser spot and impact there we go I thought that for a second there was going to be a little bit short too but hey, there we go I released that I guess I was in a little bit of a climb there but I released that at about 5,000 feet above the target anything lower than that then that trajectory sag really starts to kick in and you're really lessen and lower the chance of that working now, with that knowledge, what in the A-10 can we do about that? And the answer is not a whole heck of a lot. The obvious answer is just always stay above 5,000 feet if you're dropping a GBU-12 in a level delivery. Increased airspeed also helps. That keeps the trajectory from sagging so much. It's still going to be there, but it's not going to be as pronounced at higher airspeeds. But again, in the A-10, that's really not an option. Now a person could, and I've worked on getting this technique to work, but I just can't get anything that's reproducible. You could aim long, initially target beyond your intended target, and then once the bomb fires, correct back to the target so that the bomb is going to track long, and then as the laser starts to fire, it's going to correct down onto the target. That is seemingly a reasonable way to make that happen i just haven't been able to find a, a way that works for me plus it's pretty labor intensive there's a lot of switchology and a lot of room for error there now a person could also attempt to do a loft delivery where you release the bomb while in a climb so the bomb is going to just sort of nose over on a ballistic arc and the effect of that would be to increase that angle that the bomb is coming down to above that magic 30 degree or so number so that it's not going to be fighting against gravity and that it can make all the corrections that it needs to make. But again, we're stuck with a limitation in the DCS A-10 of not being able to do an effective loft delivery. And that really leaves the only other option is just to do the release from a dive uh, from a CCIP type delivery. Now, there is going to be a drawback with this. You do do it from a higher angle, so that's going to alleviate some of the trajectory sag. But then again, you're getting low to the ground and that's going to actually decrease the time that the bomb has to track on the laser. You need about 8 to 10 seconds of good effective laser track for everything to settle down, for all the corrections to sort of damp out and for the bomb to be able to effectively track. So I guess the bottom line here is that we do have options to be able to effectively deliver a laser guided bomb below 5,000 feet at low altitude none of which are really within the capability of the A-10 to execute or are just so convoluted in their execution that they're really not worth doing anyway. So I have one more GB-12 remaining. I guess uh, I guess the only one of those things that I can demonstrate would be the CC IP dive delivery. This is something I've never even tried this with the GB-12. It's kind of dangerous to try stuff new that you've never done in a tutorial. Let me get set up on this. I'll drop my last laser guided bomb and that'll be it for this video. Okay, so I have my target selected. It's going to be an APC. I'm going to roll in from about 9,500 feet, which well, kind of defeats the purpose of doing this from a low altitude. I'd be better off just doing it from a level delivery right here. So let me get a viz on the target. Okay, I've got the target. I'm going to roll in. Pull for the target. Let me see if I can get a good location. Okay, there it is, right there. Okay, so I'm just going to let the reticle walk on up. I'm going to get down to about 5,000 or so, below 5,000, before I release. Okay, I'll release right about there. Otherwise, yeah, you'd have been better off just doing a level delivery. Okay, there we go. Laser firing, and yeah, that, I guarantee. And yeah, there we go. That's on target. And well, I guess that, as a backup technique, could work for you. Just a CCIP delivery of a GBU-12. 
So folks, I'm going to wrap this one up here. Hopefully, if you were like me, trying to get that low-level laser guided bomb delivery to work, but just couldn't, this explains why. So thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.